freedom of speech in academia. There's a topic that's uh, a can, the proverbial can of worms. While browsing the net, I noticed an article on an American member of academia called Professor Amy Wax. Um, despite the name sounding like she's from a Discworld novel, her case throws up very, very large questions. I'm going to summarise her background in the next section and one particular figure associated with her. Let's have a look at Amy Wax's background then. It's going to help to set the scene for this whole presentation if I look at her background and Jared Taylor who will feature as well. Amy Laura Wax, born January the 19th, 1953, is an American legal scholar and neurologist. She is the Robert Mundheim Professor of Law at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. She has often read remarks about non-white people that have been described as white supremacist and racist. I'd point out I'm reading this off Wikipedia simply because it gives the most full background of her. But there is always also the caveat that anyone can edit Wikipedia and twist subjects to their own point of view. In any case, Wax was born and raised with her two sisters in a Jewish household in Troy, New York, where she attended public schools. When they say a public school in America, they mean a state school, by the way. Her father worked in the garment industry, and her mother was a teacher and a government administrator in Albany, New York. She has a very impressive um, number of degrees under her belt. She has a, a degree in molecular biophysics and biochemistry, somewhere called Mladi. She has a degree from Oxford in a Master of Philosophy in Physiology and Psychology. She's also a qualified medical doctor, and she's also a qualified lawyer. That's a pretty impressive resume, and most people will never achieve that many degrees. However, her, her long lit career as a teacher and as a, in the, as a part of the Solicitor General's office is not particularly relevant to this. What is relevant is the last five or six years of her academic career where she's become a very, very controversial figure. I shall read out her, her comments from the Philadelphia Inquiry from August 2017. She wrote with San Diego law professor Larry Alexander that since the 1950s, the decline of bourgeoisie values such as hard work, self-discipline, marriage and respect for authority had contributed to social ills such as male labour force petition rates, down to Great Depression era levels, endemic opioid abuse and half of all children being born to single mothers. So far, those are not terribly controversial points. They've been raised by other people as regards enemy in society and the, and the disintegration of the model of society many of us are familiar with. However, she then noted everyone wants to go to countries ruled by a whitey appearance because they have superior mores. Great. And the, to top it all, she made a particular series of comments about black students in her classes, which strike me as rather unprofessional, to be quite frank. Here's a very inconvenient fact. I don't think I've ever seen a black grad student graduate in the top quarter of the class and very rarely in the top half. I can think of one or two students who scored in the top half in my required first year course. Considering the debate and battle lines over race in the US, this strikes me as not the greatest way to approach that subject. It also had resulted in clapback from the school itself where the dean, Theodore Ruger, responded, black students have graduated in the top of the class at Penn Law, and the law review does not have a diversity mandate. Rather, its editors are selected on based on a competitive process. The whole controversy seems to have stirred up a hornet's nest at the university, with the dean stripping um, wax of a duty to reach in curriculum courses to first-year students. In fact, he became quite unprofessional himself. He condemned her um, comments as repugnant, fine so far, but he actually moved on to using um, four-letter words and said his presence here makes me angry, it makes me pissed off. Um, not exactly a great to use of tone either there. So how come Amy Wax can go on with these comments? Effectively, one, she's tenured, and two, the university has signed up to a policy called Open to Expression which means that basically it's very, very hard to shut down teachers when they do this sort of stuff. On the one hand, I totally agree with the fact that universities are places where all ideas should be explored, but 
There is again a responsibility as to how you express yourself, and as you'll see with the next comments from Amy, she's not exactly doing that a great favour to herself or her, hope, or, or her institution. Here she is from 2021 and talking about Asians. As long as most Asians support Democrats and help to advance their positions, I think the United States is better off with fewer Asians and less Asian immigrations. She also noted that Indians criticising America should not do so because of their shithole countries, echoing Donald Trump. Uh, oh, she also cited Enoch Powell, uh, the, the hero of the hour on certain quarters. Um, pa strangely enough, I don't can't imagine Powell coming out with comments about shitholes. If he was a racist, it was of a particular British imperial type, and he had a greater grasp of tone and of ways to express himself. Her other comment seems to be a known goal. She noted that there are some very smart Jews, but Ashkenazi Jews are diluting their brand like crazy because they are into marrying, which apparently caused people to support and oppose her within the Jewish community. She appeared on a particular interview with Tucker Carlson, that great entertainment show masquerading as news, and noted that blacks and other non-Western groups harbour resentment, shame and envy against Western people for their outsider's achievements and contributions. <sighs> Somehow I just don't see this as a great way to represent your institution. You, you pop up on bizarre talk shows that are full of noise and aggression. You <sighs> criticise students from ethnic minority backgrounds and undermine them. But none of this is the real focus here. She has invited a, a gentleman called Jared Taylor to appear on campus and speak twice now, and this is causing major problems. I'll get to why in a moment. Jared Taylor is probably less well known on this side of the pond than he is in the US. However, in the US, he's a rather prominent figure in what might be called the alt-right community. I steer clear of using the word neo-Nazi because as far as I'm aware, Jared Taylor has never engaged in anything like Holocaust denial or anything of this nature. He was born in 1951 and he's the editor of a, a magazine called American Renaissance, which is particularly prominent within the alt-right community. He's actually got an interesting background of his own as he lived in Japan until he was a, nearly an adult and is fluent in J Japan, so he doesn't fit any stereotypical pattern of, of the alt-right. However, his appearance at Penn State University after being invaded by Amy Wax has caused massive rows on the campus. For the sake of this video, I'll summarise my points about Jared Taylor in a few more sentences, and then I'll read out an article or two from American Renaissance. Taylor is a segregationist, but believes that that should be voluntary and not government mandated. Although I noted he's never engaged in Holocaust denial, there are voices within the movement he started which do believe in it, and there are others which oppose it. He has never sought to exclude at either point of view, so certainly his own point of view can be difficult. He's supportive of ethno-nationalist movements in South Africa which believe race war is coming, and he's basically seems to be nativist might be a, be a, a good word to revive for him. American Renaissance has articles on just about anything and everything. Some of them are actually interesting, even if you allow for the fact that they have politics opposite to my own. Some of the points are still worth considering. However, this amusingly, it's picked up an article from The Telegraph and reprinted it on its website version. I, I'm going to read out some of it because I consider it a uh, droll. The death knell may be sounding for the Church of England. England's established church is in deep trouble. An investigation by this paper has revealed that almost 300 Anglican parishes have disappeared in the past five years, the fastest rate of closure since records began. It then goes on to identify reasons for this possible closure of parishes. Um, it identifies points of view such as waffly theology and no consistent strong point morally. Um, this article is has actually got points I'd very much agree with. The Anglican Church has certainly sort of spread itself so wide as to have no moral centre. It's very difficult to understand what they actually stand for at some points. In an attempt to not make this presentation stretch on for infinity, I'll read out a couple of more article titles from American Renaissance. 
let's see, Maori Party want to establish prisons by 2040. The Siege of Vienna, today is the 340th anniversary of a great victory over Islam. Let's find a few more. Seven state flags still have designs with ties to the Confederacy. And the word racist ha is used in inverted commas in more of the title of that ad. Americans are divided on whether society overlooks racial discrimination and sees it where it doesn't exist. This should give a good idea of the f flavor of this periodical, I think, without me reading out hundreds and hundreds of article headlines. Obviously, inviting Jared Taylor to speak on a university campus in today's climate is probably not the wisest thing ever, and it's caused massive backlash. I'm going to close this presentation by reading some of the articles about how it's perceived and ha with the caveat yet again that they're all printed from their own political point of view. First up here's the Philadelphia Inquiry which for obvious reasons is rather concerned about the subject. I'll start reading some of the article to you. Amy Wax invites white nationalist Penn Carey Law for a second time. University of Pennsylvania, Carey Law Professor Amy Wax has invited avowed white nationalist Jared Taylor to speak on campus for the second time in two years. Wax, who is embroiled in disciplinary proceedings over a lengthy history of racist, homophobic and xenophobic remarks made on campus and to the media, invited Taylor to speak to a November 28th meeting of a conservative political legal thought class on the US radical right, according to a syllabus first obtained by the Daily Pennsylvanian. Now, I have no idea of the... Daily Pennsylvanian or the Philadelphia Inquiry are left or right wing. I could look it up, but I'd rather present it without doing so because if it, does, it allows me not to have a bias to pull just left or wing, right wing sources to for this. It goes on to note that Taylor found a New Century Foundation, the non profit organization between American Renaissance and has been called a promoter of eugenics, and he's been deemed to head a hate group um, by the Southern Poverty Law Centre. I'm a bit dubious about the Southern Poverty Law Centre, which started with good intentions years ago, but it sort of deems some bizarre organisations as hate groups by bizarre metrics, as well as the organisations that really are. It should be noted that Jared Taylor's um, claims and works have been cited by people like Matt Dell and Ruth, who was convicted of murdering nine black members of an Episcopalian church. Of course, uh, Taylor is not responsible for how other people use his intellectual material or twist it. He's raised a lot of heat with the students. Here we go. I'm very confused about what he can offer a class. He's a known white nationalist. He exists in circles of neo-Nazis, said Vanilla Varghese a third law, law student. I'd offer the p p counterpoint that, yes, he's an annoying git, and I can't see that I'd agree with him, but universities have to be able to explore ideas that students do not like, as well as those they do. Otherwise, they become echo chambers and talking shops. Unfortunately, not all humans use their power to speak responsibly or to extol the dignity of others. Amy Wax seems to be a woman who's hugely intelligent and has a huge academic background, but she seems to have lost any empathy she gained had as she's grown older. In part, this may be responsible be due to the fact she's battling an aggressive form of cancer, which is not exactly fun to do. I've had lots of family experience of this, unfortunately, and it does tend to change people's personalities. I'm going to close this presentation by noticing that Amy Wax's situation, combined with her inviting Jared Taylor onto the campus, seem to sum up the battle lines that still underlie race in the US. There's an ugly mood and an ugly tone to the whole situation, which doesn't strike me as productive. Although I'm a, absolutely a free speech advocate, for, it's not enough to say that I can I have freedom of speech so I can say anything. You still live in a society. I keep making this point because I really believe it. You cannot just run around saying anything without thinking of the repercussions of your sentences or, or your speeches. Unfortunately, the situation has no easy answers. And shutting up Amy Wax and just chucking her out seems as problematic as letting her speak. 
I'm going to give links at the end of the video in the description so people can make up their own minds 